My name is Cassandra and I am behind Garden Child Makes. I am a fiber artist and a writer and I'm here to bring you educational content on the history and the culture and the controversies of the fiber arts world. I primarily crochet, but over the past few months I've been learning to knit and it's really dawned on me just how much math is involved in fiber arts. I think it's something that's taken for granted that pretty much every fiber art has a foundational basis of mathematics. I didn't get into fiber arts and knitting to do math, but as I've learned different skills a fundamental understanding of how math informs these things has emerged. This becomes pretty apparent when you think about knitting a hat. So you start at the brim and you work yourself up in a circle, right? But at some point you have to decrease to get to the top point of the hat. You could follow a pattern to know where to place your decreases, or you could play around with however many stitches you have on your needles and see how quickly you need to exponentially decrease your stitch count to reach the top of the hat in the desired length of rows. This idea that you could follow a pattern or figure it out yourself will come back later, so we'll put a pin in that. Gauge swatches are definitely a point of contention in the knitting community. Some people will die for their gauge swatches and other people have never made a gauge swatch in their life. Both are acceptable and both are very interesting choices to make. Gauge plays a huge part in knitwear garment making. Essentially a gauge swatch is a small sample of the stitches that you'll be using to create your finished product. Most patterns include gauge measurements, which tell you how many stitches in rows equals a certain measurement, usually four inches or 10 centimeters. Like I said, not everyone enjoys doing gauge swatches or finds them essential. And for projects that don't require a specific size, it's okay to just go ahead and knit the scarf and let it be however long it's gonna be. However, they can save a lot of frustration for <laughs> during your knitting project, uh, making sure that they're the right size so you don't have to go back and unravel things. The concept of gauge wasn't popularized until the 20th century. And I'll link in the notes, this really interesting video essay about the development of standardized knitting patterns in wartime knitting. It's a really interesting watch and I definitely recommend it. Before we had a standardized gauge system, knitters spent a lot of time completing projects and unraveling them and trial and error and all of that that makes the craft kind of frustrating. Today, most patterns come with gauge information and that makes knitting much more accessible and less frustrating and it has made pattern making much more streamlined. I recently watched a really interesting video on how to self-draft a sweater by Breathing Yarn. I'll put that video in the description as well if you want to check that out. If you are following a pre-written pattern, you'll find that the pattern designer has already done most of the mathematical heavy lifting for you. A pattern will tell you where and how to decrease, to increase, to divide, to multiply, all of that stuff. But if you're designing from scratch, you'll use math, or at least counting, to determine when your decreases are, when your increases are, uh, so you get the right fit at the end of your project. This foundational understanding of shapes and measurements is especially important for garment making where the fit is super important. And the math might be as simple as figuring out how many rows you need to knit to get the desired length, or it could be as complicated as figuring out how to shape the shoulders and how to decrease in a way that hugs a certain body part a certain way. It becomes a lot more intricate once you elaborate more on the basic shapes of rectangles and triangles. Mm -hmm. 
Fiber arts and math intersect in really interesting ways, from the development of binary code, from the fundamental ideas that make up weaving, to the study of elasticity through knitting stitches. There's a researcher, her name is Dr. Elisabetta Matsumoto, and she explores how knitting can model elasticity. She shows that even though yarn by itself has relatively little stretch to it, it can create elasticity when it's looped in certain ways and connected through these looping patterns. There are a lot of mathematicians and physicists and biologists out there who research things like knitting and crochet and weaving to see how the fibers that interact are replicated in other sorts of environments throughout the world. For instance, some of the research that's been done on weaving and the structure of woven fabrics has been used in biomedical sciences to create tissues for people. There's lots of applications in, in the sort of mathematical world that is informed by things like string being knotted together in different ways. If you're looking to avoid doing any sort of mathematical calculations in your crafting hour, that is completely justified and I understand and I support you because sometimes I do just want to sit down and I want to knit back and forth stockinette and just turn my brain off and let it happen. Other times I find it super interesting to sit down and try to figure out how something is designed to see what sorts of shapes and stitches have constructed a certain texture or pattern or garment. That's part of the, the sort of creative minded piece that I think draws a lot of people to fiber arts. So if you're curious and you're open to experimenting with different garment constructions, different textures, different pattern constructions, then I would definitely look into how some of the numbers of your pattern and your garments inform the way that you are constructing them. Understanding that math forms the foundations of knitting can help you to build confidence and find new ways to use those skills to create new and interesting things. So even if you are a self-proclaimed math hater like myself, try to embrace it, try to find ways to use it, to empower your design process and your crafting and your artistry. That's all for now. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any other topics that you'd like me to explore or get into, let me know in the comments and like and subscribe would be great. Thanks so much, you all. <laughs>